Good evening, everyone. My name is Maggie Miggins, and I want to thank you for joining us this evening for our seller seminar. We uh, ran a very successful seller seminar in the beginning of the month. And so for those who couldn't make it, they asked if we would run again, another one, which we would love to do. And here we are doing it. And um, some other questions that came up, which I thought, ooh, those sound really interesting. I think it'd uh, be best to be able to share that with everyone. So our goal tonight is to, um, we do have all your questions and thank you all for sending them in and we will answer them all. And our goal today is to just, if you're in the market or thinking about moving or maybe not, but maybe you just even wanna do some fixes on your house, we wanna be able to have you do the best things for your home uh, implement the, the best ideas with the lowest budgets usually, because I'm very thrifty like that. And, um, and try and help you see your way if this is the time for you, or if this isn't the time for you, at least we could come up with some ideas for you that might work for your home. So as soon as my Leslie gets back, because she's going to start scrolling with the screen, uh, we'll start. And we're going to share our screen. And here we go. Move me down. Perfect. So this is about getting the jump on the spring market. And you say, spring market, Maggie, it's only January. Well, guess what? If you I bet you right now, if you were to drive around town, wherever you live, you'll start to see people, you'll start to see paint trucks and maybe appliance companies. Um, you know, you kind of get an idea when people are thinking about moving. And so always for me, those tells are, or even dumpsters in a yard and, really to get a jump on the spring market, we should be prepping now to get your house. In fact, a lot of our towns where people buy homes, this is the spring market right now here and today. Uh, many of our towns are bonus driven uh, by the people that work here. Um, and so they have their bonuses, they're burning holes in their pockets and they're deciding, well, do I wanna upgrade my home or do I wanna upgrade to a new home? So we want to help you to prep your home for sale if indeed this is the year that you're going to do it. So there we go. So prepping your home for sale. So amongst all the questions that we had, and we'll go through those, one of the things that I think is most important is the whole idea of decluttering. And, you know, we wind up living amongst our things and very comfortably we live amongst them. But when we get our house ready to bring to market, um, it's really important that you, you're, one, you wanna bring it back to neutral, but two, you have to show your house. It's almost like it's not your house anymore. It becomes a product of the market. And how's the best way or what is the best way um, to kind of take your person, personality out of it, neutralize the house? One of the most important things to do is to get rid of the clutter. First of all, clutter, if you have too much of it, it shows that you don't have enough closet space, right? So in both that picture and in this picture, you could see, and you say, where are we gonna put all our kids' toys? Look at the total, I mean, that is to me is mind boggling, the difference in, it's the same area, it's the same space, so maybe a desk moved out, but that same radiator's there. And just look at the difference with the clutter and how it looks nice and neat and clean. And I'll tell you, we were doing a lot of decluttering myself in my, uh, I'm finishing my basement off and I'm not moving but we wanted to get rid of a lot of stuff. I went up to the container store. They have some amazing containers see-through. So I see what I'm putting in the containers. I think it's important. It just it has a nice polished, fresh look from one picture to the other. Go ahead, Les. This is the same room. Could you imagine? This is the same room. And there's too much clutter, as you could see on the left. Um, so what did they do? They wanted to turn this into extra space, an extra bedroom. They took out all those cubbies. They took out that desk area. I mean, that just looks so sloppy with the dog bed and everything. And look at, they've transformed it into a lovely bedroom. I mean, that looks really, really nice. Neutral walls. It looks really nice. So again, this taking every time I can't emphasize decluttering enough. Every time you get rid of something, it's almost as if you're putting money in your pocket. If you could see your way through to getting rid of something. And one of the best things to do, I believe, is um, look at it, you know, the Marie Kondo way. If, you if it doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it. If you haven't worn it in a year, get rid of it. You're, you're not gonna lose that 10 pounds again. Or, or, or if you think, um, well, I might need that someday. Get rid of it. If you have to buy it someday, you'll buy it someday. But I promise you, you won't. I, I have a husband. We have gotten rid of lots of um, 
thought, what happened? We got rid of him. He's not even around and I'm getting rid of things. But um, too many tools. I mean, how many screwdrivers does one person really need? 500? I don't think so. I don't think so. So think about putting it in piles of to keep, to donate, to trash, um, and to give away. There you go, right? Are those my piles? Yeah. Keep, give away, donate, or throw in the garbage. Throw in the garbage. Throw in the garbage. That's a goodie. That's a really goodie, goodie. Painting. Now, could you imagine this is the same room? I am in my life, I cannot imagine, but you could see what a can of paint will do. And I like neutrals. I mean, that green, I'm sure back in the day, it could have been nice. I bet you if you remove those three photos, you're gonna see lines all around there. Um, and that yucky carpet, it looks like, I don't know, somebody's dog was messing on it, but <laughs> I, I just, it does. I just think it looks so much cleaner and neater with those dirty things, the um, shades taken off. Look at how fresh and crisp that room looks. It's, it's night and day. And by the way, little fixes like that, doing those little fixes, a can of paint, taking down the window treatments, taking away that paint, making it fresh and clean. Maybe that costs $500, maybe, but the value that it adds is incredible. People can see themselves living there. You know, most people don't have an imagination so when they walk into a home, they, uh, and even though they might have eventually do things over anyway, if, if you can make it clutter free, if you can make it clean and neutral, and if they can see themselves living there, they'll emotionally attach to it. We'll spend a lot of money to get that, to get your home. Here's another instance of painting. If that's exactly, um, that blue is just, I mean, it, it might be nice in an accent color, but it was just too, too much for that room and that size room. Here they've created a bedroom out of it. I think that looks fabulous. And the space is not huge, but you can see the carpet's the same. They've added some furniture. Mirrors always do a lot of great things as well. Um, but it just it, it just feels, um, it feels inviting. I guess that's what I wanna say. It, it feels inviting. You wanna go into that room. You wanna go into that bedroom. It just, it's the same space, but it looks so different. This is one of my favorites. I had that wallpaper in my dining room. <clears throat> it was 1998, I think. Some people still might have that red dining room wallpaper. Get rid of it. Take down those old window treatments. You see that the furniture's old and people mostly don't like brown furniture. Um, in fact, a lot of times you have a hard time selling the brown furniture. Sometimes you can't even give it away. Those big wardrobes and those big credenzas, people don't want them. But in this instance, what they did do was they took all that red paper down and the, and the dual color like that, that's really not in either. They took, they left the old light fixture, which is surprising to me, but they took down that red flock wallpaper and that yellow. They left the, the, the rug and the furniture, but you see what they did? They took out that tea set that nobody uses anyway, by the way, up on the left-hand side, no one uses that tea set. Um, they took that out because that's kind of dated looking. <clears throat> they took out the corner chairs and on the, on the table itself, they did something a little more modern and fresh. Believe it or not, that looks like a, um, uh, one of those big hydrangeas that probably aged, you know, how it, what's the word I'm looking for? When they start up fresh, they look white and then they slowly turn colors as the season goes on. That's what it kind of looks like. Don't you agree? Like there's mm -hmm. big old bulky hydrangeas. I love them. Cone shape they are but they left the furniture. They just moved things around, took down window treatments. And that just looks fresh and clean. And I'm sure the windows were washed because those look really nice and crisp as well. You could see the green beyond. I think that's important, window washing. One of the things we do like to tell people when they're getting ready, you know, some people say, do I do an inspection? Don't I do an inspection? You know, your realtor, whoever she is or he is, should be able to walk through a house and kind of point things out to you. And one of the first things I know I do um, when I first pull up into someone's home, I'm scanning the lawns and I'm looking to see where the boiler possibly could be to see if there's any fill lines like you'll see in the right hand side. But that pipe right there in that center picture, that's an oil fill line. That's there's usually historically an oil tank under the ground. And those are big no no's now. So what I'll do is um, if I see something like that, I will bring it to a seller's attention. Absolutely think maybe we should do a tank sweep because, you know, God forbid you do have an oil tank. You want to be the one in charge of taking it out. 
you want to be the one who's hired the company to make sure it comes out. Not that you wouldn't have that anyway, but if it's done beforehand, um, that's one less thing to have to worry about. In the, um, the picture on the, on the left-hand side, those are what oil lines look like. They're copper. They're usually, you know, half, I guess a half an inch, inch in diameter. There's usually two of them. You'll see them coming through the walls. You'll see them coming up through the basement. Um, so those are signs that there could possibly be an oil tank. And that is definitely something I would think about. And as far as inspections, if it's an estate sale or something like that, that I wouldn't worry about. Although that oil tank piece, I would always worry about. Um, but the buyers are getting, uh, you know, 27 years ago when I started in this business, we just did, and oil tanks were okay to have. They're not anymore. But now your buyers doing mold tests. They are doing sewer line tests, almost like a colonoscopy for your sewer line. They're doing those tests. Um, of course, roof, they always bring in roof, you know, termites, asbestos, those kinds of things. But it's interesting as the years go on, the different tests that are starting to, to come around. So one of the latest ones is, of course, there's always going to be mold. That's a really important one. And then also um, the sewer line. That's something new. Where they go in with a camera, and they literally go down your sewer line all the way out to the street to make sure there's no blockage. Very interesting. Because some of these homes, you know, where we live, you know, 15 towns or so that we covered, a lot of this construction, you know, some of it's from the 1800s, early 1900s. Was it clay piping? What type cast iron? What's the piping in there? Lead too, lead pipes. People, we, it's rare in, in the 27 years I'm selling real estate, I've had one house with a lead pipe and that's just recent, something in Short Hills. Um, we don't really see that much. Uh, that's all kind of been changed, but that could be another test that gets done as well. Now Compass has a program, just so you all are aware of it. It's called Compass Concierge. So when you list with us, we take you, whether it's staging or renovation, you don't feel like, you know, your money's doing well on the market. You don't feel like cashing it in to do some of these fixes. Compass Concierge will loan you the money and it's there's zero upfront costs. You pay the loan back when you close on your home. Zero interest. Um, so it's a nice way to, if there are some fixes that, that need fixing, or if you have uh, home inspection issues, you can use Compass Concierge for your home inspection issues, which is a really nice thing as well. Sometimes people are moving from one house to the next and money could get a little tight or you're, you know, maybe you don't want to liquidate something in the market because it's flying high, whatever reason, this is a great program. If you have any questions on it, because I'm just breezing over it. If you have any questions on it, it'd be my pleasure to go into more detail for you. But you can see the difference between a house that used Compass Concierge, whether it's the staging piece of it, painting, window cleaning, picture hanging, whatever it is, light fixtures, that's the same house. That's the same house. And that's pretty incredible. So what not to fix? Well, as we'll talk about the numbers a little bit, um, I don't know about so much rent doing these major renovations. In today's market, people are so desperate to buy a home today, this very moment, that I don't know how much of, of you know, somebody's telling you to renovate a basement or redo a basement or renovate an attic. I take a pause. You know, my, um, my next door neighbor put their house on the market. And this kind of tells you where the market is. Uh, they paid um, almost a million one in 2020. They have it back on the market today. In one weekend, one weekend, they had 112 showings. 112 showings, 112 buyers looked at that house and they had multiple bids and it was priced at a million 318. So you could just see that the prices, I mean, he did some fixing, don't get me wrong, he did, but we had other listings where we haven't done any really big fixing and we had 16 offers on something. So the market today is so hot that there would be certain things I would recommend hundred percent, absolutely. Um, but I don't know if I'd be renovating a kitchen or um, uh, anything major, major, unless it's absolutely necessary. And to me, major is an oil tank. That's something major. To me, major is mold. That's something major. Um, asbestos, that's something major. Um, but as far as like, you have a day to bathroom, throw a pretty shower curtain, get some nice, I mean, I think we talked about it, right? White fluffy towels. Mm -hmm. This, you know, the house on the right, I went into that house and it needed, um, 
some of the, you could see uh, some of the sheet rocks. There were places where the sheet rock had holes in it or wasn't fixed properly. So we just smoothed, I think, in fact, that one little piece didn't do you. We just smoothed out the sheet rock. We left the ceiling open and exposed like that. The window had been placed in, but it didn't have the, the window molding around it. We did all of that. And then we sold the house. We didn't, we didn't finish up the attic that way. Well, you know, we left it exposed. So it was kind of cool looking. Uh, this was an office that they worked in. So we did little fixes. We threw some pillows up there. You could see a little pop of color. But really, I love the idea that you're looking out at that green. I mean, they're near the reservation, which was one of the features of this home. So you're looking out at that beautiful green. And uh, it just worked. So we didn't go in and wait and spend, you know, $20,000 fixing it. We just did some little bits, little fixes on that house. The house, the kitchen on the left, you know, it's some people like cherry cabinets, some don't. Half the kitchens that sell every year um, are white, believe it or not. But, the, the, you know, somebody might come along when I, I just read an article about countertops, just switching out a countertop, maybe putting some really cool looking poles on that cabinetry. You could also, if you wish, paint it. It's not a, it's not a um, rather if the cabinets are good, if they're nice quality cabinets, you could paint those. I just did that in my own house. I painted my cabinets from cream and I made them a light blue and I just added a different fixture. It looks like a, a different backsplash, different floor. It looks like a, a brand new kitchen. And it isn't, it was just fixing what's there because I didn't, I didn't want to throw everything into the um, um, a landfill. I thought that the cabinets were good enough that I could recycle them as it were. And that's what I did. You could do the same thing with something like that. Nice steel appliances, maybe change a backsplash out and change the countertop, put some um, knobs on it. If you like the cherry ca cabinet, you could leave it or paint it. These are the bathrooms. So many of them we see around, they're like, oh my golly, Jake. You know, one of the things, um, I might change out that pig toilet, quite frankly. Uh, I think that's a little much. Um, and maybe put a new white one in. I'm a big white fan in the bathroom. Uh, but I don't mind the floor. I think it's kind of fun. And I think that blue tile is kind of fun in the center one anyway. Uh, if to the left, if the... Um, if you don't want the pink tile, you could always, there are companies that will come in and paint it white if you want, if you want more of a white look. But some of these bathrooms are coming back, they're very fashionable with the old tile. And people are wanting to uh, just rehab the tile, whether, you know, and clean it up and polish it up and changing things by putting, do we have any pictures of um, shower curtains or towels? You know, that like something white. White, white fluffy towels are your best friend. When you're putting your house on the market, white, white, fluffy, fluffy towels. That's always going to be your best friend. It really is. It's clean, it's neat, and it just looks nice. You could throw some color in with shower curtains. You know, there's some really awesome looking shower curtains out there. The one on the left is a little wild. Um, I'm more sedate with the one on the right. But you could, if you wanted to, add a little something, something uh, to a bathroom just by sh shifting out the shower curtains. And I'll tell you what the most important room for people, I don't care what anyone says. The primary bedroom, as we call them, used to be called the master bedroom, the master bedroom and the bath, really important room. And then that kitchen family room space. People say, oh, we don't want small bedrooms for our kids. Oh, they don't care. They, they don't care. They, as, there's a bed, there's a desk to do homework and a chest of drawers. Um, because there's always other space that the family winds up in anyway. Most of the time you're in your bedroom, it's just to sleep, right? I mean, you're uh, maybe watching TV, but the master bedroom probably becomes an oasis for some and, uh, and the kitchen family room. Those are really important rooms today, still today. And I just read an article, another room that's really starting to come back is the dining room. People are starting to use dining rooms again, uh, starting to entertain again. I think everybody's sick and tired of COVID, so they wanna be able to entertain. So that's another room that's coming back into style. We had multiple offers on this house. We discussed we, the pros and cons of, do we finish the attic and put it on in the spring market? We put this on in December. We had 16 offers. We sold them the first weekend. We didn't finish the attic. We staged it. We had stagers come in, really good stagers, and we could get those to you. Um, but we had the stagers come in and they um, they staged it, and the house, it was a really pretty house. We could always show you interiors to see. But they, they were lined up around the corner to look at this house. 
and we had 16 offers and we did not finish the attic. We had, they had plans. I mean, it was all plans. I mean, it was all right there. They had floor plans done, they had architect drawings. So you sell that, you sell that, that idea that, Hey, if you ever wanted to, you could fix this and put this, um, fourth bedroom in the current owners of that house. We're going to do just that. And then two years ago, COVID hit and then lifestyles change. And then they just decided, you know what? They wanted to make a different change. So we saw a lot of that happening. But that there's one. We did not do the attic. It had six, 16 offers. Sellers, they really like us too. Now, I mean, they liked us the whole time anyway, but now they really like us. Because 16 offers is not too shabby. In fact, I have to tell you, the current market, one of our agents right now has a listing. I, sit down. It has 62 <laughs> offers on it. 62 offers, 62, six, two. <laughs> I'm like, what? 62 offers. It's crazy. It's crazy land out there. Interest rates are low. People want to, people like the security of owning a home. People want to get in. So yeah, she's got 62 offers. It'll be interesting to see where that one winds up. Um, and let's just, uh, oh, I'm sorry. She's up to 63. <laughs> she just texted us. She's up to 63. That is bonkers. I want to talk about the current market. And then we're going to go to questions that everybody sent in. So I just want to share this chart with you. These are different towns. That some These aren't all the towns we cover, but I just did a snapshot of some towns to see, you know, what's really going on. So I wanted you to see that, for instance, the top town we put in was Milburn Short Hills. And the end of the year, what happens at the end of the year? So historically... In Short Hills, we normally wind up with about 75 homes on the market at the end of the year. Well, if you look at the numbers, you could see we wound up with 18. Today, we only have 17 homes to buy. And some of those might even be an attorney review. And I didn't look at the hot sheet um, you know, an hour ago. I would have. But the point is, there's only 17 homes to buy. And if you split those up, I think out of the 17, three are in Milburn and the other 14 are in, in Short Hills. So there's, and there's hard, there's hardly anything to buy. Normally 2020 is where you can see that the, the market started shifting with COVID and we had 50 and that was a low number for 2020, but 2021, we ended with 18. And so looking at all these different towns, I mean, today there are 10 homes to buy in Summit, 13 to buy in Maplewood, two to buy in South Orange. Heck, if you live in South Orange, if your house isn't on the market, you're crazy. Get your house on the market. There's no competition. There's nothing to buy in South Orange. The borough in Chatham has seven. The township has 10. Madison has nine. Livingston has 22. That, Ladies and gentlemen, that is just not a lot of inventory. That's just not a lot of houses on the market. So, and it's not going to last like this forever because it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, normally real estate markets are seven. They used to be seven-year cycles. Now they're ten-year cycles. This last one was a thirteen-year cycle. Um, anybody's asking me, Maggie, when, when should we sell today? Today you're going to get your best price. I I don't know what's going to happen in two months. I don't know what's going to happen in in six months. The price you have today is going to be different than the price then. But I think it's important you know that if you were to sell your house and and of course, we always hear, well, I always had someone's house today. My son graduates high school in June. Terrific. We'll lock you. We'll put your house on the market today, February 1, and say you don't want to close till June. You're in the driver's seat. You, as a seller, are controlling everything by being in this driver's seat. You really do. You could say, I'll sell you my house. You get to pick and choose whatever offers you want, because only one person can buy your home. And by the way, Mr. Buyer, I don't want to lock, I don't want to close till June. My son's graduating at the end of June. No problem. They just want to buy a house. They just want to know that they have a house. And so people will, I call it obey. They'll obey. They'll do whatever it takes in order to take your home. And because we're not cookie cutter around here, right? Every home has a story. No two are alike normally. Once somebody finds a house and they really, really want it, they're going to pay for it. They'll, they'll, they're willing to do whatever it takes to get the house. So I just want you to be aware of that there's just nothing on in the market today, nothing. And I, you know, I think that we're going to have a nice strong spring starting in December for spring for us and through, um, you know, probably through June, but 
you know, people always say, oh, I like everything when things are in bloom. My house looks so pretty in the spring. No, it doesn't matter if your house looks so pretty in the spring. If I'm getting 63 offers on a house today, you could see that the buyer demand is so strong that it's important that you get yourself out today. And you could surprise your buyers by when they're living in your home and they get to see how beautiful your home looks in the spring when they own it. It's important. Because inflation's rearing its ugly head. And you know what happens? Interest rates go up, interest rates go up, prices usually go down. So it's important you're aware of that. Um, you know, that was the end of 2021. I'm hoping that number drops a little. Um, you know, you see different things in the newspapers that tell you different stories, but um, I think it's important we keep an eye on that because they will have to put the interest rates up. They will. And so that now normally around here, it doesn't affect our town. It does, but it doesn't. Every time an interest rate moves a point, it, it, it's equivalent to about 10% purchasing power. But at these higher price homes, it doesn't affect us as much as the lower price homes. And we do, uh, in the areas we cover, the, you know, the average prices are pretty high. But still, you want to keep your eye on that because everybody else is keeping their eye on that. And then, of course, we don't have our salt deductions. You know, we don't get to, we don't, we thought we were going to get it. We, we're not getting it, not for today anyway. And so that's, um, that's important that you realize that we don't get the salt deductions. It'd be different if we did. So it doesn't matter if you own or rent, you're gonna, you know, if you're not itemizing, you're getting that same deduction. So since our taxes are kind of high around here, it would probably behoove you to think about, hmm, maybe I should sell because of the deductions and not getting them back. I think that's, that's something we should all work on yelling at everybody in Washington to get them back for us because that's a really important deduction. And I, I fight like hell to get it back. Now this, so this is my friend, Jeff Otto, and, I, and he's amazing and he runs numbers like nobody's business. And so this was a chart and I use this chart all the time because it's important for people to see. Now this was an average price. So, you know, whatever your price point is, if you're a million dollars, then just triple it, right? So if you bought your house in the end of 2006 and you paid a million dollars for it, and then you got transferred in 2012 and you had to sell it, you lost about 30%. And it took you till about 2019 to get to even, just get to even. So you could see though how the prices in 2020, they went up 11 and a half percent. I spoke to Jeff the other day uh, this was a projection from last year. So that number at 6% isn't going to be 6%. On average, that's going to be about 14%. That price is, will have gone up in 2021. But you know what? If you go from 2000 to 2006, it's just not sustainable. You could see how then they went down. 2008 was when we all got crushed. Those, those, the market could not just hold those prices you know, over the life of averages, it's usually about 4% a year real estate should, should be an asset that should go up about 4% a year on average. So these numbers are not sustainable. So therefore they, you know, he's looking at 2022 being 3%, but 2023, these are all projections going down 2%. And then so it begins. So I think it's important if you're thinking about selling to look at this chart and think, huh, where am I at in this chart? in this grand scheme of things, what, what is gonna come up next? And if you're really thinking about selling, I would tell you to do it today. I would tell you to have done it yesterday. I really believe that there's just not enough inventory, there are enough buyers, and then therefore you control the process. It really is supply and demand. It really will always be supply and demand. That's what real estate is. And I think it's important that if you're thinking about it, this is the year to do it. So then we had a whole bunch of questions and thank you so much for your questions because those are important. So somebody asked, should, should we refinish our wood floors and replace the old carpeting before selling? Well, you know what, that depends. Um, what are the conditions of the floor? Can they use a spit and polish? Can it just be a buffing that they need or do they really need total stripping and they've had, you've had dogs and cats and messes. Um, and then as far as the carpet, are you replacing, do you have old carpet down there now? And you're ripping it up to finish the floors or are you taking up old carpet and putting down carpet 
you know, some people don't like carpet necessarily. Sometimes they like it in the bedrooms, but most more often than not, they don't like carpet. A lot of people suffer from allergies and they like the wood floors. They like area rugs, like behind me, you can see um, my office has hardwood floors, believe it or not. And we did finish them and we do have area rugs. So it just depends. If, but if it's, if it's old, dirty carpet, get rid of it. Get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. And, 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 put, and put a neutral shade if you're gonna do anything. Um, and then if, you're, if the floors are in deplorable condition, depending upon what they are, are they pine, are they oak? What color are they? Do you have, I'll tell you one thing. If you've got five different colors happening, you, you need to try and get that all into almost one color. Um, uh, you know, if you've, you've got the tile here and then the floor here and carpet here, it's just, it, that's too overwhelming. So if you can try and get things close to being the same around each other, that I would do. I wouldn't have a blonde dining room, hardwood floor, and then, you know, uh, Jacobean in my living room. I, I would want that to have the same color, that there's the same consistency. And my decorator would tell you the same. What do you think is the best thing a seller can do to get their house sold quickly and for the best price? So one of the most important things you have to do is declutter. I will sing that song, declutter, declutter, declutter. You must, you have to, no, nobody wants to see your stuff. They just don't. They, they wanna try and picture themselves living there. Um, so that means taking away all the pictures and that means um, you know neatening up the bookshelves, and that means emptying the closet so it doesn't look like you have a lack of closet space because everything's shoved in there. Um, less is more, less is more, less is more. So if you can declutter, I think that's important. And then if you can bring everything back to neutral and not, there is nothing like a fresh coat of paint. I'm going to tell you folks, there's just nothing like it. A nice neutral. I love pale oak. It's it's a beautiful color, even though it's in the beige family. I think we're going like beigey, grazy, but it looks, um, it just looks clean and fresh with a, a nice, you know, white uh, trim on all the wood. It just looks pretty and fresh and neat. And you can always accessorize with color. But I, I think a, a nice pale oak, just to bring the house back to what I call bring it back to neutral so that it appeals to 90% of your buyers. This was a very interesting question because there is a lot of talk about the, um, electric vehicle chargers. Now, $8,000 seems like a heck of a lot of money to extend a power line underground. I, there's gotta be a cheaper way to do it is all I kept thinking. Um, and that just seemed exorbitant, $8,000. And I know that they're putting, I, I, I just don't wonder, I guess we could find that out. Is there anything that the state's doing uh, for grants for homes? I don't know that, but it's just, I know that the state's been trying to, I do believe give grants to towns, and the towns are looking at putting in EV stations. And in fact, it's it's passed as a law to do something with, you know, the towns will have to do that with the, uh, that's for electric cars. So I think that seemed pretty pricey, $8,000, quite frankly. Uh, and I'd want to see if I could get it done cheaper or if there's, see if there's grants out there. Now, as far as a million dollar home spending 10 to 15K to spruce up landscaping. Well, here's what I feel about that. It's winter. And nobody knows about landscaping. And if you're thinking about putting your house on the market and putting it on now, I wouldn't spend that 10 to 15K. First of all, you can't do the landscaping until April, May anyway. Um, and I don't know if you'll get the ROI on that. I think you can make the house look pretty. Um, I think you know, fresh flowers always look pretty when you first walk in, that's your first impression. I think um, with that, you know, and I, I'm a big uh, uh, landscaper. My, I have lots of beautiful grasses and, and trees and shrubs. So I like that. But I don't know if I think you'll get the ROI on that. I, something's telling me no. And not today. Not today. What upgrades are worth doing? Mm. Did I tell you about decluttering? <laughs> <laughs> I think you really need to declutter. I think painting. I, I really think a fresh coat of paint is really important to, put, uh, to have in your home. Uh, light fixtures. If something's a dated looking light fixture, there's some more modern looking light fixtures out there that you could put in. Um, I think um, cleaning. Now this is gonna sound really crazy because we all live in our own dirt, right? But I think you have to understand that uh, windows are worth washing and hiring a professional to do it cleaning a home, making sure your home is really clean. Like 
I open the drawers and I don't see crumbs or, you know, I don't know, you know, I open up the bottom drawer. It's nice when the drawers are lined. It just, it speaks to the idea that you've been a good steward of your home. And when somebody comes in and they see that the window, they see that the windows are nice and crisp and, and clean and that the sills on the inside of the windows have been washed. We have really good window washers. The Conley brothers, we love them. We, they're, they're, the, they're fabulous. They do the best job on windows. You won't get them during what I call the high holy days because we're Irish. And so they, they're in the pipe bands and they play a lot uh, in March. But they are tremendous. And I think a clean window makes all the difference in the world. And your gutters, getting your gutters clean. Because what that does is that speaks to the idea that you are taking care of your home. So those little things, people think, well, if they're willing to do those little things, then, what, then I'm sure there's other things that they've taken care of as well in their home. So I think those are all important. So this was an interesting question. I've heard of selling your home, but remain living in it, a lease back clause. Can you explain that? You bet. So very often, as I said earlier, buyers wish to lock in. They want to lock into a home. They even want to lock into an interest rate. So they might say to you, Mr. Seller, um, would you be willing to close on the home in 60 days? So let's say you go on in February, all of February, all of March. Would you be willing to close at the end of March? And then we then we don't care if you want to stay till till the end of June. We'll, we'll you can lease it back from us. Sometimes they'll say, now even today because the market's so dang crazy, we'll let you live in it for free. We'll let you live in it for five dollars a month. Well, whatever it is, they're, they'll do whatever it takes to get your home. And and that's in this crazy market. In normal circumstances, what you would be paying, and the attorneys handle all this. We don't. But you would be paying um, their their fees of what it will cost for them to hold it. That's in a normal market, but we're not in a normal market. Very often, a person would rather lock into it. They're willing to pay more money as long as they can lock into an interest rate. So that's what a lease back is. They'll they'll you'll close on it. They'll own the home. You'll still maintain uh, insurance for your uh, valuables inside. They'll maintain their homeowner's insurance, and then you could say a month or two months and then the day you move out then is when they do their final walkthrough they might hold a little money in escrow on that just because you're still living in it but you become a tenant in your own home that's how that works and it happens a lot it happens all the time what are the top three ways to update your home for under a thousand dollars well that was a really good question because i think to paint one room is probably five hundred dollars um Paint your front door. You know what? Paint your front door. I think that is so important to have that nice, fresh look when you first walk in. I have a really crazy color on my front door. It's called Follow the Yellow Brick Road. And boy, is it bright yellow. But it it, it looks nice. Um, I'm going to go back to washing your windows and doing a deep clean on your home. And I don't know if you could do that for $1,000. I don't think so. I think to wash windows is probably depending upon your home, the size of it, and are you a tutor, and do you have a little diamond? You know, it just all depends. Um, I think it cost me about four hundred dollars. I have just a little four-bedroom simple colonial. Um, I think it cost me about four or five hundred dollars to wash my windows. But I think you want to wash your windows. You'll have a nice-looking front door and the wood around it, so it looks it looks fresh when you first get up there. And um, a good clean. I think those are really really important. What are closing costs nowadays? Well, that's an interesting question. From a seller's perspective, if you're a seller, your closing costs are your attorney, your real estate transfer tax, and that's approximately 1% of the sale price of your home. If you're over 62, it's half a percent, just so you know that. And um, if there's any major home inspection issues that need fixing, that would be a, a cost for you. And of course, real estate commission fees. If you're a buyer, you have inspections, you have an attorney, you have title work, you have um, escrows that you have to put up. So for a buyer, you can anticipate it being between one to 3% of the sale price, trying to have that cash around. Also, if you're buying a home for over a million dollars, there is that 1% mansion tax that you, so if you're buying a house for a million two, you have to come up with an extra $12,000. If you're buying a house for $3 million, you have to come up with an extra $35,000. And that is payable right at the closing. 
to the state. Let's see, I'm gonna see if there's any more. I know there were a couple more questions that came in. Are investment properties a good decision now? Golly, that's a really good question. I, everything's pretty frothy right now. I don't know about that. If it were me, I wouldn't be buying. Um, should you do the floors? Um, what upgrades are we doing? What are buyers looking for in a home? You know, that's a really great question. I think they, I think 80% of the buyers are looking for um, the home to be in good condition. I think, I think they could even live with an older kitchen if it were clean and neat and, and, and pride of ownership. That's the word. Like you take pride in where you live. I think that buyers can turn around and, you know, it's all the realtor selling it too. You want to make sure the realtor selling. I showed a house today and someone says, gosh, we, we wanted a first floor bedroom and bath. I'm like, well, that's easy. You could take this office and make it a bedroom. And then you could take this pad of room and here's space that we could add a stall shower. So there's your bedroom and bath. It's all about selling what somebody's looking for as well. Um, we had somebody, this was interesting. Somebody paid a consultation for, it looks like you had a stager in. Um, and they recommended $6,000 for staging four to five rooms and the bathrooms. And everybody has to get paid for their work, right? Um, is it worth it? Are they willing to be flexible on a three month minimum? Most stagers I know do want three months. Um, you know, we work with all different stagers. And then once we start to really get busy, and there's a lot of real estate that comes on and a lot of the real estate agents that say, hey, I really think you need to stage this. And it's at a different market. You might be right. You might be thinking, listen, if I put my house on tomorrow, it's going to sell. I don't need a stage. And you know what? Today, you might be right. It just depends upon your timing. If you decide that you're going to wait until April to come on and there's 25 other homes in your price point and you're not the only pebble on the beach, as my mother would say, or you might live in. Milburn, but the buyers looking in Milburn, Short Hill, Summit, and Chatham, and throughout that whole area, there might be 30 or 40 homes on in your price point. You might have to stage just to stand out. But you're right, today, everything is selling. And with when I tell you 63 offers on something, 112 showings on another thing, you know, we're all giving that same message to all the sellers out there now. Who bites and who doesn't, I don't know. It's just going to depend upon your timing. If your timing is today, no, you might not need to stage. But bring your house back to neutral. Make sure the walls are, you know, neutral colors and um, everything's clean. I, I can't emphasize enough: clean windows, clean toilets, clean bathrooms, all your all your bottles out of uh, out of the showers, um, toilet seats down, rugs lifted. I mean, there's there's a whole thing that you you want to you want to get one chance to make a first good impression. So it's important that you make it, and it's. It's just that you sparkle. You just want to make sure you sparkle. Um, mortgages and closing costs and taxes. Well, you know what? Mortgages, the rates are low, but they're going up. We haven't seen anybody really paying too much in points or any, nobody's even discussing points anymore. Um, but closing costs can be one to 3%. And, and part of that is where they do taxes for escrow for the mortgage company. So that's important to, to know. Um, but I'd say at least one to three percent. I think that is it for questions. Do we have any more other questions? Does anybody have any other questions that we haven't answered? You can raise your hand. You can put it in the chat box. You can, um, one question people ask, golly gee, if I sell my house, where do I go? That's frightening, isn't it? You've been in your home for 25 years. You've raised your children there. Nobody can take your memories away, but you decide, well, where can I go? Well, you know what? Fortunately around here, you can always put things in storage. You can always go into, there's rentals. There's something up in Florham Park called the app. They're also down in Union. Um, there are long-term um, places, oh gosh, right on um, like, like hotel living. Um, some people have summer homes. They could stay there. Some people will go to Florida for February, March, and April, and then you know put stuff in storage and decide, okay, let me let me deal with this when they come back when I come back. But one of the reasons I tell people to look at it, um, 
one of the reasons I think you should think about it now is if prices drop, and by the way, they can, prices go, go up 10%, they could drop 10%. And if you're looking at a, say you're a $2 million home, I'm just saying that, and prices dropped 10%, that's $200,000. That's a lot of money just because you wanted to wait a year or maybe wait six months because nobody has a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know when prices, but if they will, it'll happen. <laughs> they go up, they go down. 27 years I've been doing this. And it's it's like a pendulum swing. It happens overnight. Something people get rattled, something, something goes wrong, and people just think, oh my God, I, I you know, I want to sell my house. So you can see it. It's like a her development's running. Um, but I look at that and I think, well, if prices were to drop 10%, depending upon what your price point is, um, and you were to go into a rental and we don't get the salt deductions anymore, even if you if it's two hundred thousand dollars and you paid forty thousand dollars for a year's worth of rent, deciding which your next move is, net net you're still up one hundred and sixty thousand. But if you lose ten percent, you lose ten percent. And if you're doing financial planning for the future, it's just something to keep in your mind. Um, how far out should I think to sell my home? Well, that's a really great question, Brian. I think um, I think now. If you're thinking about selling your home, I think now. When I say now, I mean now. I mean <laughs> now. I would, I, because we don't know what the future holds, but I know what's happening today. I know how good the market is today. I know that there's no inventory. I know life is about supply and demand. And um, we have a tremendous amount of demand and no supply. So I know that if it's about, if it's not an emotional decision and it's a business decision, you'd be on the market already. But when it gets emotional, then it's a little more difficult. So that's, we have to help you try and navigate the emotional piece of it and just state just the facts, just the facts, just the facts. Um, any additional comments on removing the chandelier from the dining room? It's not modern, but it's not ancient. Um, you know what people love? You know, it's so funny you say you put the pottery barn. It, yes, it is POS sometimes. But you know what? Everybody reads those catalogs, don't they? And the young kids coming in, you know, they see that and they're like, oh my gosh, I loved how that looked in the pottery barn. And they like it. So um, if it's a nice fixture and you plan on taking it with you anyway, James, why not take it with you and, and put up the pottery barn if it makes it look a little more modern? Um, how long does it take to, to clean up and update and list your home? Could it take a month? You know what? Uh, our motivation at the Maggie Megan's group matches your motivation as a seller. If you say, right now we need to get this done, then we are all hands on deck and we're making sure it happens. So it could probably happen in two weeks, um, just depending upon the level of clutter and declutter. Because we have companies we work with that could come in and just get it done for you. Um, I think it's important that you use our resources. And um, sometimes we think we can do it ourselves. I'll give you, for instance, my husband thinks he can still snowplow. And he thinks that he could still shovel the sidewalk and the, and the driveway. Not happening. The man's in his 60s. I hired a company. It's, we're done. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about him having a heart attack on me. Yes, maybe 10 years ago or five years ago or three years ago, he could have done it. But today, I decided, I made an executive decision that I wasn't going to let him do it anymore. We hired young kids. That's why they're there. The young kids. And they just come in, swoop. They cleaned my driveway that last snowstorm. It was a beautiful thing. I could pull my car right out of my garage and off I went. It's a beautiful day in America. So we have companies that do that kind of stuff, whether it's decluttering, whether it's staging, whether it's window washing. Do you need to check for an oil tank? Should you check to see if there's mold? Maybe we should do a colonoscopy on our sewer system. We have companies to help you do all that. And it would be our pleasure to share our little black book with you, quite frankly, uh, if you need people and... Um, you know, we'd love to be able to help you. So yes, we could do it. Our motivation always matches your motivation. And sometimes people think they're really motivated and then they have to step back a little bit and slow down. I get that. It's, it's you know, when you sell your house, it's almost like going through five stages of grief. It's very difficult um, because you're, you're tied into memories. And um, who wants to ever sometimes look at the next chapter? Some people do, some people don't, but it's difficult. Um, but I think it's an important exercise and I think it's important to do it. So we, we'd be more than happy to help you with any of that. 
my gosh, we finished up 10 minutes early. I'm really excited about that. I can go home and eat ice cream. Um, I want to thank everybody who came on our, our chat tonight. Um, it sometimes will end this and somebody will say, oh, dang, I meant to ask, blah, blah, blah. Well, then email us and we'd be more than happy to help you. If you want to use any of our uh, you know, plumbers, electricians, and if you need any of those resources, email us. It would be our pleasure to help you, um, to, help, to, to Caroline or do, uh, yeah, do Caroline, Caroline too. Caroline, you're going to be, if you're on this call tonight, honey, you're going to be getting the emails. Caroline's our assistant. She does a fabulous job. I've known her for, oh my gosh, 25 years. And um, she'd be more than happy to share any of our resources with you. If you have a question specifically about your own home, about the town you live in, about um, what pricing is looking like, if you want to know what your neighbor sold for, but you don't know who to call, call us. We'll share that information with you. It would be our pleasure. Um, because sometimes and because sometimes somebody will get a card in the mail and they'll think it's one thing, but then it's sold for something different, right? So um, give us a call. Give us a shout. We, we'd love to be able to uh, to help you. Leslie's putting something in. Oh, and our phone number. That would help. 376-899. And we have a whole team of amazing agents that work for us and work with us. We all, we're one big team. We're one big happy family. Uh, Leslie's been sitting with me. She is my director of marketing. She's the one to get your homes on the market all over those websites and Instagram and all that other fun stuff, Facebook. And Susan, who is our uh, director of business development, sitting here with us this evening as well. She's the one who's calling around looking for buyers just for your home. I mean, we have a plethora of buyers, I promise you, but she's the one who's marketing your home as well. So. And then we have a whole bunch of great agents that have lots of buyers to, to bring to your home. So um, it would be our pleasure if you uh, have any other questions or if you would like us to come take a look at your home, be more than happy to do it. Give us, we'll give you our unvarnished opinion about uh, what we think you should do and how to get your home ready to get the most money. And yes, that's it. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Take care. Thank you.